Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your fleet captain. Yes, I am taking that demotion this week because I want that new badge. So bad. So bad. It's so pretty. I'm your fleet captain, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew this side of Bannon's Nebula. Vice Admiral Eric is here looking at that fancy new Enterprise Bars cake menu, and it does look good. Though maybe you might have had enough cake today. I don't know, man. Did too much cake. cake? Too, much, too cake. much cake. Definitely too much cake. Chocolate cake? Chocolate Coconut? cake. Chocolate? Two yeah. chocolate cakes. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh nice. <laughs> nice. I had a Approves double... Indiana Troy. <laughs> <laughs> One was in the shape of a giant Oreo. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. It was so thick. That's what seasons. she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. For once to. it's not me. I'm very happy. <laughs> I had to. You're uh, vigorously happy? Growth. Yeah. Growth? Yeah. Um, growth. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting this one off well. Oh, man. I had a double chocolate Klondike bar, and that was really good. I had the ice cream today. It was It was fantastic. Captain Giraffe is here, and no, she doesn't want a fucking cookie. She wants to marvel in the amazingness of Ahura and this episode. And finally, Lieutenant Commander MC is here ready with about a thousand ways this episode references the Kelvin verse. Um, I could do that with any episode. I know True. you can, but like really this one. <laughs> like sure. really this one. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back and welcome aboard. How you guys doing tonight? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eric's yes. full of cake. You're full of glue. I'm MC's, full of glue. MC's full of of sass. I don't know. Full of something. Full of Kelvin full, Burst. Uh, she's filling up luggages. That's what she's filling did. up luggages. Yeah. That's right. That would have been the better thing to say. That's right. Uh, and if you notice someone missing, that's right. Commander Hawk. He's currently playing with the live Enterprise band and will be back with us next week. Um, before we get started, bring it on a serious note real quick. I'm actually going to hand it over to Eric because I think out of everyone on the pod, you're the most familiar with everything that's going on because we wanted to show our support for the SAG and WGA strikes. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I think um, I'm trying to think of how to how to word this. We we have so many people um, that we've met through this show and we respect and we're friends with now. And right now they're going through this through this negotiation with the. Uh, with the studio, so both the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild of America have gone on strike, and we fully support them, 100%. This pod, so many of us wouldn't have met each other if not for, you know, these artistic people that, you know, bring this love to the screen. And sharing that love with us is, is amazing. And, you know, everyone deserves fair pay and fair compensation and the the use of artificial intelligence in both the writing and acting sides of things is scary especially when mm -hmm. we don't know how they're going to use how studios are going to use it and how honestly irresponsible what they've said has uh, that has come out so we stand with the writers we stand with all the creatives the actors um during the strike so I don't know if we want to, is there any announcements we want to say? Like, I, I know we can't do extra things for the pod. We can't promote or we don't yeah. want to. Right. Well, one we're, we're, you know, obviously like, we're not going to say, Hey, like go sign up for Paramount plus or any of that. And you know, we, we do interview actors every now and then the writers, that stuff is going to stop. And if they came our way, which hopefully they shouldn't and wouldn't, uh, we would turn them down. So um, it's just going to be us doing reviews and stuff for a while, kind of no extras. Um, there, there's some other things that we have to figure out with stuff that we hadn't planned in place before, but um, we'll keep you guys updated with all that, obviously. But as Eric said, we are in full support. Um, I am going to give a very quick shout out to one of my dear friends from the fandom I've known for like 20 years now. Um, that's uh, my friend and SGA member, Brian Patrick Stoyle. He made a really informative uh, TikTok on what exactly both these unions are fighting for and uh, like what Eric touched on, a lot more detail about how scary all the shit is that's going on with AI. So, And I can add also that, you know, I mean, you guys live in Toronto. I live in Southern California. Um, the industry is vital to where we are like i know so many mm -hmm. people working for the studios or with mm -hmm. the studios and mm -hmm. we know the 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 prices here also like the rent in southern california it just 
absolutely insane. People cannot live decently without like leaving wages that are decent and make sense. Um, I mean, that's also, also that simple. Pay people leaving wages mm -hmm. for the place where they have to work. That's Toronto and LA mm -hmm. <laughs> and many yep. other places. But these two places are really, really central to the film industry nowadays. So, yeah, just pay mm -hmm. people for the work they're doing. Yeah. Yep. And don't intentionally drag out negotiations so that people will actually lose their homes. <sighs> don't threaten to fucking starve writers out, you horrible, horrible, horrible people. Um, and uh, I will, you know, the other thing I'll, I'll announce is if you're ever going on Twitter to try and form and talk about these things and you're talking about a CEO, make sure to put in parentheses how much they're making yep. because yeah. it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, also, if you see the people striking, honk their horns, give yep. them food or, you know, just go and give them love. Yep. Yeah, they are they are currently um, uh, fundraising to mm -hmm. help people get some money during the strike, um, being able to feed their family or pay rent. Uh, we can post some of those also. Like I don't have them like right now in my mind, <laughs> but we <laughs> you'll we'll be able find to them find them. them yeah, on. well, you'll be able to find them on our Discord and or on our um, so uh, socials, I suppose. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's right. Uh, actually, I just made a post on our Insta, and I could turn it into a story and put some links in there. So you're gonna have to do so much editing on this one. No, it's fine. <laughs> I, you guys honestly have made my life so easy these past few months. Like editing's a breeze. I love it. You guys rock. We've been together so long now. It's like, it's like just I don't know. I could do it in my sleep. Everybody good. Everybody good on the strike. Any anything else you want to yeah. touch on? Cool. No. So let's get into it. This week, what happens when the Enterprise? Oh. Comic Con this week. Oh, I, I got right news. now. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah, I'll have we're it. We're doing the news. Oh, we're doing yeah, the we're, news. We're still doing Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. This week, what happens when the Enterprise and Farragut run a joint mission to get a deuterium plant operational, but Ahura begins to hear a signal that can't be heard by anyone else? How does Hemmer? Yes, Hemmer returns in this one. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, how does he factor into this episode? Why is there brotherly tension between Jim and Sam? I mean, because they're brothers, but other reasons too. Hmm. How does this show handle Kirk's first meeting with Ahura? And why is there also, speaking of tension, more of it between Una and Pelia? We're going to break it all down, but first we need to thank our amazing patron collective at the ready room level and above. And uh, because Hawk's on here, he was going to read them. I don't get to read them often and keep the order pristine for our next show. I will do them. So a big thank you. <laughs> I was like, yes, I don't have to go. I was thinking about it for a second. Thank you to Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett, Tallulah, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, Joe Saparito, Noe Santos, Kang Hui, Takaku Nagumo, Kara Kennedy, Fernanda Nogales, SMK, Laura Linderman, Colin Davidson, Alan Davis, Jesco, Michael Graham, Emily and Travis, Gildara, Cassie, The Homework Stealing Vulcan, Maggie Light, Spapple, Wayne Ritz, uh, yes, Wayne Ritz, Scone of Arc, Sean, Jay Howard, Anna Yerdadon, Mahalani Uchiyama, Matt Harker, Joshua Lewis, David Willett, Tara Pollen, Slope 74, Rude Parakeet, Joshua Miller, Adam Sanders, Eris Benjian, Lanky Guy, Cynthia Markey, Aaron Walkie, Carl Angoli, Michael Kwan, TJ Mayer, Caitlin Elizabeth Dean, Jim McMahon, The Chief, Ernesto Castagna, Sedano317, Deborah Hussey, and our three newest collective members. That's right, three. That's right, three fry short, Cat <laughs> Tepe, and where's the new one? <laughs> One is now lost I'll in translation. I Let remember the name if in case you forgot. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Kat Tepe and Malkin Reed. Congratulations. Thank you guys for being our patrons. We cannot do this without you and love you. You guys freaking rock. And yes, that was Malkin Reed, not Malcolm Reed, but a great. Yeah, it was like, words. damn, he's bad with back with his pineapple. Nah. <laughs> 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 And a big thank you guys, as always, to our executive producers, Commander Chris, Simon Steger, and the Chief Ernesto Castagna. I will say, the the executive producers got to 
spread their wings a little bit this week. They get to ask guests a question, and even though we are going to probably not have as many guests uh, as long as these strikes go on, uh, Commander Chris got to add in that little bit about the bacon in our interview with uh, Jordan Canning. <laughs> Everyone so was thinking about it, too. <laughs> everybody was thinking about it, so uh, you never know. It, it pays to be an executive producer. Um, that's right. So, Giraffe, I believe yes. that uh, as people are listening to this, you're somewhere exactly. else right now. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm in two places at the same time. I'm here, yeah. <laughs> and with MC, we're at the same time at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I'm right now, I think, hosting a panel about science and evolutionary biology, uh, where I'm just here to crack jokes and, uh, you know. <laughs> not give too much information on science personally <laughs> <laughs> and um, i'm watching that panel i was gonna yes. say and you're there watching that panel are you wearing that amazing dress that you made uh, i was actually planning to wear this shirt so that i had some continuity for the day yeah so I like see I, i'm not gonna be wearing this shirt <laughs> no continuity for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I hope uh, MC is enjoying the panel. I think it's very good, even if it's very light. Uh, and we'll be at San Diego Comic Con uh, the whole five days. I mean, four days, four and a half, I suppose. Um, don't hesitate to come see us. Maybe you already found us today. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we'd be glad to say hi. And we're going to cover, I suppose... Comic books, cosplayers. We'll we'll see what's going on. I, I have I have some plans. I'm very looking forward to going through Artist Alley. That's always one of my favorite things to do. So. Musicians, mm -hmm. musicians will be here. So yeah, there we'll is be... plenty of stuff to do at Comic Con. That's right. Uh, even exactly. with writers and and uh, actor striking. Yep. Uh, I will say that uh, MC hit it right on the head. Uh, Artist Alley is awesome. Right there, that Bo-Katan poster is from San Diego Comic-Con Artist Alley. So support artists because they rock. They're amazing. Exactly. And I have one more news. Yes, hit it. Uh, this Monday, the auction will open to grab a seat to meet Jonathan Freck with the companion. Uh, to be able to participate in the auction, you need to be one of our patrons. And our patrons start at one dollar after that there will be eight seats since strange new parts has only one to auction but you're more than welcome to go um pod hopping <laughs> 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 to try to win a seat at other auctions if you're not lucky enough to get our seats but yeah that's an awesome um awesome event and all the proceeds will go to PanCan, which is a, a, a organization that tries to cure uh, pancreatic cancer. So please <laughs> come to the auction, one dollar Patreon, and then may the odds be ever in your favor, I suppose. Or the profits, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> in PanCan's favor, yeah, both. Yeah. Both. Mm -hmm. um, you can go pod hopping as long as you park your shuttle back home with us. That's all we yeah, have. exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, Eric, we ordered your awesome, uh, your pride uh, discovery postcards, which look awesome. Oh, but yeah. We, we made, yeah, we finally <laughs> did something with those after the failed bid. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> These ones. Uh, we, I had to find a good postcard place. I, I hope they're awesome. They looked awesome when I made them online. So hopefully they look just as good as a postcard. Thank you all for being so patient. And then, um, I already talked too much. Eric, why don't you talk to us about our awesome friends at Heroes and Villains? Yes. So, did we did we announce it last week? We fully announced it. We did. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we have this amazing partnership with Heroes and Villains. Uh, you can get your hands on some awesome Star Trek gear. Or, you know what? They have partnerships with a lot of different brands. There's amazing Star Wars stuff on there, too. Um, and you can get 20% off your first order if you use our code. Strange. That offers U.S. only. So as a Canadian, I'm crying, crying, just a little bit crying inside. Not a little bit. It's yeah. a lot. And outside a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we were actually going to get some stuff to show, but we are not doing live this week, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully next week we'll have some really cool stuff to show you from them. And uh, you'll see it on our socials, too. So that's right. Heroes and Villains dot com. 20 percent off your first order. 
No Stranger Loop this week, as there is a ton of content in this episode. Like, everyone got featured almost in this episode, which is pretty cool. So we're going to get right into it. It is our review of episode 206 of Strange New Worlds, Lost in Translation, our roundtable order tonight. We'll go Giraffe, MC, Eric, followed <laughs> by <laughs> myself. You know, uh, hey. I've um, had the best order four episodes in a row. I want to say I'm very happy about whatever well, is, you is thank, happening. Well, Eric missed two, so you could thank him partially. And Hawk's missing this one tonight, so you could thank him for this one. Um, sure. This probably means you're going last for what is more than likely the, uh, from everything we know at least. Uh, we haven't got anything, so we don't know. But more than likely the crossover, so... It's uh, fine. Take that I wanted to will. go first on this one. I know. This is a great episode. I want to be last on the other one. It's perfect. <laughs> It's perfect. It's perfect. perfect. Um, let's get into this one, guys. Uh, b- before we really get into the the main parts of the episode, there is a a. I just want to start by acknowledging what the production team did uh, for this episode um, with the Enterprise in this nebula, which the production team named after Melissa Navia's late husband, Brian Bannon. Uh, just how how awesome is this for them to do that? It's really great, especially for this episode. Yeah, yeah it's the, I, I don't think there's another answer but no it's, there's not yeah. it's just um <laughs> it, it, it's a really I, neat I, thing i think it shows also how much they care about each other and how they're here to like support each other i love to see that with the disco crew and um i love to see that with the strange new worlds crew yeah agreed uh let's talk about the signal right the signal and hammer's return people have been wanting it and it's not a full-fledged return but we still get to see the man, the myth, the legend, Chief Hammer. While the Enterprise is trying to get Starfleet's new refinery up and running, Uhura alerts now Fleet Captain Pike that she was receiving a signal, but it disappears. At least she thinks it disappears because she thinks it's a signal at first, right? Um, It is going to be something we're going to talk a lot about more. It's a major part of this episode, but she thinks it's a glitch. So she decides to run a full diagnostic on the communication system, and she's able to do this with the help of some recording she made of Hemmer teaching her how to do it. How do we feel, guys, about this being the way that we get one Bruce Horak, two Hemmer back? Um, both of these videos, as well as via the form of communication the Nebula aliens used. So I, I, I have to say that the ringing in the ear, because they already did it in episode three, I was like, don't we have like any other way to <laughs> show us <laughs> that she's hearing something? I don't know. I was just like, oh, okay. Ringing in the ear. At the beginning, I actually thought it was a follow through, like a follow up oh, of what happened. Four? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Episode four. Sorry. I said no, it's okay. Episode four. I was like, oh. Is the mind thing back? <laughs> and no, it was something totally different. Like, sorry, you're not supposed to remember what happened two episodes before. <laughs> it's episodic, giraffe. It's episodic. We forget what happens between episodes. But in this episode, actually, we do not. And that's something that I really like. Like, we see Hammer, we see them process their grief and talk about him and his absence. And I, I, I did like that because, you know, Last week, they just forgot about everything that was that ever happened on Star Trek. And we're back to a series that remember what happened on Star Trek. So I'm game. I'm here for this. Um, I, the moment where she opens the video and watch him, I was like, oh, my heart. Oh, my God. Like, so emotional. And I just, I just like that they're still exploring this relationship even if Hammer is not here anymore. And it's a little bit too bad that we saw that we do that like post-mortem basically, um, because I would have liked to see that in season one also. But yeah, it's it's so on point on the, how I imagine Hammer to be, you're asking me to do the same thing too many times. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you're going to do it. And uh, here's the tutorial <laughs> and just go away. Remembering that she was a cadet back then Mm -hmm. so he was letting a cadet mess around in the nestle following a tutorial he met on a pad and i think it's giving so much i don't know it's giving i don't know if it's giving it's giving scotty but it's giving really like engineering shift that like oh totally cannot be bothered anymore yeah 
I just have like a little bit. I, I, I had a question when I said it, but then throughout the episode, I, I saw how, why it was here. But how do you just go and mess around in the nacelle when you know there's a new chief engineer? You know, mm. like, mm. like <laughs> politeness, uh, work ethics would like want you to be. Hey, so I had that deal. Is that so cool? You know, because you don't want to go step on people's job, basically. Right. Um, but I liked how it was actually explored with Pelia showing up. I don't know if we're talking about this right now, but... Um, you can, because yeah, it's there. No, you can. Pelia showing up and being, hey, you never talk to me. And then I was like, oh, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about this. I'm game because you've all been ignoring that for like five episodes now. Mm -hmm. And... And I'm a bit surprised how everybody has been so hard on Pelia because they, I, mean, I know they're part of a crew, but Hammer is not the first person they'll lose. And, and, and they know that. And I'm sure even by rotation, people just go and move. I mean, we see that in Lower Decks when Mariner is so pissed at, uh, <laughs> at Boy, Boy. for going on yeah. the Titan. Um, but that's part of the job. Like you you lose people and it, it's interesting to see how um important was hammer that they really don't want his his spot to be filled um so yeah i really like that nice uh, mc uh so much of what giraffe said um i really love seeing over um just taking charge with everything um they this does seem to be something that they have carried through episodes this season and it's a, a character choice that i really like for Uhura and kind of informs a lot of the stuff that happens in tos and that's just how dedicated to her job she is like at episode one she was just like N get away from my console this is mine and in this she's just like i'll you know run the full diagnostic and yes she's still trying to figure out the whole you know work breast balance which is very much something that happens when you're grieving and not mm -hmm. dealing with it uh but also something that happens when you're 21 and new in a job and it's just like i want to impress everybody uh so You're just overwhelmed by everything you have to do also <laughs> or overwhelmed yeah. yeah it's like let me keep working because if i don't stop you working then nobody could be disappointed in me and you don't know how to prioritize also let's be honest. exactly yeah. yeah um the part of uhura watching uh the video um i'm gonna get teary when i do this um because I got teary when I was watching it today. Um, right now I'm in a um, very difficult time because my mom's, what would have been my mom's 70th birthday was on the 13th and she died 13 days later. So this time is kind of very much a reflective time for me when it comes to her. And when you're in that kind of situation, having just the dumbest reminder of them is so great because my mom's voice is still on our answering machine because we still have a landline in my house because my dad is old. Uh, so if I call home and nobody answers, the answering machine picks up and I hear my mom. So who are uh, watching this video, which is just this tutorial, but you can feel all of like the happiness at being able to see this little um this little piece of their relationship which is something that's completely gone now but she can kind of relive it through this she's enjoying it but also has this grief that she still hasn't quite expressed yet it was really well done <laughs> uh and um, the stuff with Pelia, um, I think they really need to use Pelia more. She was good in this episode. Um, and I do think they're kind of establishing that 
the reason why they haven't used her as much is because they're all still trying to get over Hammer. Um, I mean, of course, I think the real reason is Carol Kane is probably very expensive. <laughs> to use yeah. Her yeah. <laughs> yeah. They couldn't have like Carol Kane and Mia Kirshner at the same time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It was hard enough doing her with Paul Wesley for this episode. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think that it's a, um, an interesting way. As, I would say with Uhura, it makes sense her not interacting with Pelia. I will talk a little bit more later about Pelia's interactions in terms of Hammer, because I have different feelings with other characters. But it worked very well here. And I do think that we're really kind of establishing Uhura as... She was very much an, an enigmatic character in TOS. And everybody used to make the jokes of, oh, she's just, you know, the space secretary. You know, all she does is repeat what the computer says. But we see here just how much more her job actually entails and just how dedicated she is mm -hmm. to it. And I think that's one of the reasons why we didn't, well, other than the misogyny and racism, why we didn't see more personally from her because she does make herself so much of her job yeah um thank you by the way for sharing what you shared about what's going on with you right now and your mother because i totally understand and feel that and that was beautiful yeah so thank you eric what can i add to that <laughs> not much yeah, that's why you're um, last see that's, that's right. why i didn't want to be last <laughs> <laughs> um that being said like like everyone said earlier like watching her uh, watch the hammer message was heartbreaking and heartwarming because you saw how connected they were even though we didn't see it in the first season unfortunately um and really this is what that scene um did for me because you saw hammer and immediately i'm just like oh man i wish we got more of him and then we see P mm -hmm. pelia show up and i'm like here's someone i haven't seen this season either i wish she um had showed up more or at least they had utilized her more and we're halfway through the season. Like, I hardly know her. And then, yeah. you know, like sarcastic or like jaded me is sitting there. I'm like, if she dies or leaves in episode nine, mm. I'm going to be super mm. pissed. This better not yeah. be a thing every season where they just keep on getting a new engineer because I would hate that. Um, that being said, like the scene was beautifully acted, beautifully shot. Like, this is why you pay your writers and your actors properly, right? For yeah. scenes like this. Yeah. Yeah. Support the strike. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um I loved I love seeing Hammer on the video. I think that if you were gonna bring him back, and, and listen, we'll talk about it more later too. The other ways that they brought him back I thought was very brilliant as well. Um, but this was just so beautiful because I think everybody who's lost someone wishes they had something like this. Because not everybody does, especially, you know, I lost my mom when I was five. We didn't have iPhones or, you know, things like that yeah. yet to be able to have videos like that. I would kill to have something like that so um it was it, it's really beautiful and it was a fun way to bring back i also just have to say like i ha i love how much like the immediate like concern that that pike has for her right like mm -hmm. his, his tone of voice and everything like everything was really well acted not just in that scene but throughout this episode with like you know we, we talk a lot about how like Starfleet doesn't care about mental health, and I feel like they forgot about that for an episode. Yeah, and, right. Like, really? I mean, really, you really should. Have I mean, what? They, right? they still, they still kill a guy. I'm mean, because no, nobody so was like, yeah, right. yeah. nobody was really worried about that dude who was like seeing shit, and they're like, right. yeah, it must be a headache. Go rest. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they did tell her to take a break, but did she really? Like, she no, was and they quite didn't really active. Give her too much shit about it. Yeah. So it, it's it's better than some episodes. It's still not perfect, but no, mm. I like that. Like there's concern and it's somewhat taken care of. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk more about Uhura's visions, right? Because throughout the episode, she receives them from the beings that live spoilers, by the way, um, within the deuterium inside the nebula images like, and we can talk about this some more, a zombie like gornified version of hammer, which by the way, makeup team, bravo, yeah. bravo. Mm -hmm. Um, the shuttlecraft accident that we know her family was in, right? Um, dead crew members in the hallways of the Enterprise. She sees like an evil, not evil, but like a shadow version of herself. Um, all to all show that the Enterprise and the station were were hurting them. 
how do we feel about this being the way the show um the way the show showed differences on how other beings communicate and that kind of being you know and her being the vessel and ramon another officer maybe not being able to handle those visions in the same way draft um so you know i'm a language nerd right yeah. um uh and i i have criticism because some things don't really make sense but i'm so glad that they used a non-vocal um language and a, a, a a civilization, I suppose, of people and aliens, I don't know, who can't, were trying to contact and not the opposite. Because very often it's Starfleet who tries to contact and tries to be able to communicate and to be understood. And it's kind of rare that we have the opposite. Like we saw it in Discovery with the 10 Cs, right? It's them that want to be understood and try to find a way to communicate with these um, uh, the 10 Cs. And here it's the opposite. And I like the fact that at the beginning, they don't even understand that something is trying to communicate, which is most probably what would happen if we ever do first contact, because mm -hmm. there are chances that and uh, be other beings will use the same frequencies that we can hear uh words and sound and all this is kind of not high like yeah even a sentient ant who would try to communicate with us would use pheromones and we just can't even perceive that they're trying to communicate you know so bees dance uh there's so many other ways to communicate. so i was really into the fact that for once it was not just oh i'm hearing a signal beep, boop, beep, 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 boop, boop, you know and then like like the gorn i will never forgive them the gorn light morse latin language latin alphabet english language like bs they did in first season so i really like that 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 attention they brought and they were like okay she's an incredible communication officer what if we throw her like a humongous curveball of it's a language that she can't actually hear that she can't actually decipher i would have lot for love for hoshi sato to be in that position yes. for example mm -hmm. you know and like you see how brilliant she is and how like the moment where she goes click and which is like the same moment where uhura in the kelvin verse i win the oh game. you got there first uh -oh. i got there first <laughs> when she looks at the video you know in beyond and goes like mm -hmm. it's them you know <laughs> like the same they're communicating and I, I found it very beautiful my only like minus is that already between civilization like human civilization or process of death and how we see death and how we understand death and death and why we grieve is so already wildly different that the fact that these aliens were able to tap into the right emotion exactly that would give her the the meaning that what she was like what they wanted to say it was like okay like they understand our civilization better than a lot of people i suppose that actually um, leads me to a really good question giraffe for you do you think that the only reason that they were maybe able to is because maybe at the time she'd maybe just watch the videos of hammer that that was something i was like at the top of her psyche she was yeah, but that, means, to it. that meant that they were able to recognize that that was fear okay. or that was you right. know grief right, or right, that right. was which i don't know it's star trek like i'm i'm gonna no, fair, my, like, no, no, like, you're, it's, it's a good point but i'm just like the moment where she interprets everything and be yeah. like they showed me that because it means that they showed me that i was like not so necessary like i could find like 10 i tried i was like i'm gonna try if i can find another way to interpret like this thing you know mm -hmm. and i totally can you know it could be like it just she's so good she finds the right answer right away right. but i i really liked it and I like the fact that it's a, a good way also to explore her backstory uh, without going through flashbacks, without like, you know, doing a whole episode that is only centered around like something that happened in the past. So I thought it was very elegant and very, a very nice way to make a Uhura centric episode where she's the badass, she's the smart one, you learn stuff about her and you see her also interacting with everybody so okay, and i wanted to say one more thing and now for sure it's gone it is gone damn it damn it 
damn it. It'll come back. It'll come back. Ah. Think hard. Yeah. Think hard. While you think hard. MC. Gone. <laughs> okay. Um, I absolutely loved this. I loved being able to get more of a weirdest backstory. I love seeing her put stuff together. That being said, and I think I might have talked about this on my YouTube channel in season one, that I would like to see stories about Uhura that don't have to do with grief. So I, this one is great. I love this one. This is the last one they get, though. <laughs> Fair. Because yeah. they dealt they dealt with it in Children of the Comet. They dealt with it in All Those Who Wander. And now they have this one where it's, you know, you know, three episodes is a good arc for that. Let's move on to another. But I feel the end actually says that. That's I mean, yeah, is. I mean, I can, I can understand. I can understand that, too, um, that yeah. we did need to deal with Hemmer's death. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, just considering how few Uhura episodes we've gotten, the fact that this is the... And I mean, we've kind of had the same complaint about Spock, where it's just like, you guys would keep on hitting the same beats with all of these characters. Yeah. But that's, you know, no, that's not to say that I didn't love it, because I did. I'm just like, you guys are under this at this point. Um, and I enjoyed the idea of the aliens you know sharing you know the, these visions as a way to communicate felt a little contacty to me i was thinking a rival a little yeah. bit yeah. yeah yeah oh i remember um, what i want to say oh i'm, I'm go gonna ahead. write it in the chat so i don't forget forget go ahead no just say it say no, it right now just, just oh, say it just do it oh go i was it. gonna say they're like so it's giving like tos episodes also but in a good way like the moment where she fights herself it's so the oh, enemy yeah. within absolutely yeah. the enemy within like it's not I, I wonder if it's not even like the same like <laughs> i don't know it's also the look on her face right yeah it's, it's very like it's the, very the, much like the, the, like shatner's face in yeah yeah i was like yeah, that yeah. is the enemy yeah. moving like yeah. done well i'd say yeah. if that's even possible but i don't know uh yeah it was there, there was a lot of like tos id like the sentient cloud very obsession you know there's mm -hmm. something driving people crazy driving people to their death um the enemy within with like these of you roaming around not you remembering what you've done uh and we were speaking about like the previous episode how they were trying to do tos but like failing at mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. it at a level that is 2023 and i think this episode is very tos but at the same time very elevated very very elevated that's what i wanted to say <laughs> no i completely like, agree with you on that uh th this does have like a very elevated tos feel to it and i'm here for that um oh yeah i'm tr just trying to remember where i was but i remember now <laughs> uh so i would say that this is the second Uhura episode we have that like all those who wander was kind of like part that was like more of an ensemble everybody yeah. piece uh but it did have a lot of Uhura in it so th this is the second one after children of the comet and it, giraffe is probably going to totally disagree with me on this because she kind of already did but in that episode we also did a um communicating it differently like it yeah, uh, not in a way that you know humans can really understand, and even in a way that Uhura doesn't really understand till right near the end. And are you talking about with the music? Yeah. 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 Um, oh. And I I appreciate that, but I would also like to see Uhura. I I mean, I guess maybe it's something that's either really hard to do or you know not very exciting to have somebody acting as you know like a linguist and you know translating mm. things and i have my own views of what uhura's like actual role on the enterprise should be um i i i always felt that she should actually do more ambassadorial stuff like actually like going with the captain and like because i mean i feel like that would 
you know, if you're in comms that, you know, if yeah. you're the one who knows all the languages and, and sense. I mean, she, we also know that she like researches like the, the customs and stuff like that. Right. So I would like to see her, her doing that, but I'm apparently the only one who thinks that. No, you're not. Um, no, I would like to see that yeah. too, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, all the, I've never mentioned it before now, so I always just thought I was the only one. No. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I mean, again, it's not that I dislike that they did it in this episode, um, the, the kind of unusual language. It's that, you know, I kind of like, you know, look at the episodes that they've done so far and it's just like, you've had to, the next one you do has to be different. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, an overly critical thing to say. No, I think um, it's, it's not. It's fair. I, yeah. Uh, but I mean, especially because one of the criticisms we've been having of season two is that a lot of the stuff seems to be going over the same stuff that we've gone over before. So it's like, I, I, I do feel the need to call it out because it's like, if you guys are repeating the same patterns in season two, you got to know not to do it in season three now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, this, uh, it was great to to see her yeah. do all this. Eric, I remember when we, by me, we, I mean, I only saw the first trailer for season two, but they showed the crash and we were sitting there like, ah, oh, they better not do a whole episode about this because we would hate that. And I'm glad that they used it as part of this, the communication <laughs> and her sort of going over her grief with Hammer. Um, when she says, I see the irony in the communication officer that can't communicate and how it's actually a different form of communication and how she processes it. I thought that was really, I thought it was really mm -hmm. clever. I love the way that they, they use these scenes to help her, to help aliens communicate with this crew, like in a nonverbal sense. Um, and then each, each scene was a little tidbit in her, in her history. Like, why not? That that's that's amazing. I love her. She also has not been used super like that much in this season. So yeah, you know. But like I, I like MC said, oh, sorry, sorry. But like MC, you said, um, I do want to see her do something different. And mm -hmm. yeah, I I want to see her be a communications officer mm -hmm. and be a hero in that I, way. I just have to take a moment. Just say called it because when we did the uh the trailer episode and they showed the scene in the the shuttle um i said you know what i bet you there's gonna be hemmer's gonna be a spirit advisor or something like that and i feel very <laughs> yeah. much like we got that i think you did so. <laughs> um yeah speaking of spirit advisors i i loved all the images i think that the cinematography like in this was like really good for all that mm -hmm. the way they focused like focused in on hammer and like the makeup when he's all zombified and gross like i wouldn't call this a horror episode by any means but like the the scenes that are horror like are very <laughs> shot in that way which i really appreciated um yeah and i'm i i, I just will take the brief moment to say that I'm really happy we didn't get the let's get Uhura's entire tragic backstory because we don't need it. We just don't. Um, we already I, know it. I loved it. I'm, I'm really glad Giraffe, that you remember what you said because I was thinking it too. That hallway scene was so TOS from the knife to her facial expressions. It was just like oh I loved it. And there were so many other things that were TOS about this episode that I enjoyed. But uh, this, this specifically. Um Will the real James T. Kirk please stand up? Please stand up. up. <laughs> please stand up. Please stand up. That's right. We finally get to meet for the first time. Yes, the first time. For real. The real non-alternate reality version of one James Tiberius Kirk. Um, to start, we find out through Sam that Jim has been promoted to the first officer position on the Farragut, uh, the youngest ever, which is ironic because the record before Jim being held uh, was by their dad, George, who was the first officer. Daddy issues. Daddy issues. Mm -hmm. Who's the first officer of the Kelvin. Sam, not too pleased about this as there seems to be sibling rivalry about who can better impress daddy. Uh, thoughts on their BS and the introduction of Jim Giraffe. Oh, so first of all, uh, third time is a charm, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Lieutenant Kirk. Um, 
that slow mo transporter arrival <laughs> where you go around his legs and around his booty and then like i was like what's that oh wesley who's that who's that and i was like duh it's scary like it was so drama that uh, go rewatch just that transporter arrival it's like the 11 minute going around the enterprise, enterprise of like the motion picture but make it transporter you know but um i'm here for siblings you know that it's like my favorite relationship to see in yeah. movies or you know in uh, in shows because it's so rare that there's actual sibling like energy and i have siblings so I relate um I, I was just glad to see them finally together because the only other time where you see them together it's during operation annihilate and sam dies right mm -hmm. so and it's literally william shatner with a mustache yeah he is dead he's not he's not even dying <laughs> he's, he's dead. dead yeah you don't see him yeah um so i'm glad that you, you we get to have actually like a little bit their backstory because we know there's something deep and something important for kirk and we saw that already on the on episode three where the fact that his brother is alive it means that it's the right timeline for him yep. so i'm really happy to see all these like bantering and i don't know sam sam is supposed to be the oldest one right i believe yeah. sam is the oldest yeah he's not giving like oldest um no. energy like an old like i'm the oldest one and i'm like i would never tell my little brother Oh, you need to let me impress the parents. Like, who does that? Like, I think Sam's definitely got a little bit of an inferiority complex, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but he is on the flagship also. Well, so, right. Like, that, I don't that's know. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was a little bit puzzled by this, but I, I was really happy. I'm, I'm going to say, I was not a. Like, I'm not a Kirk stan, like, to start with. I, yeah. I like Kirk because I think it's an interesting character, but I really like what Paul Wesley is uh, he's doing. I'm going to make some enemies here, I know. <laughs> but I do think that he brings these um, levity and these uh, badassness at the same time. But all that by being like the kind of goofy guy you want to have in a group you know yeah. like it's like a dnd uh <laughs> a dnd party you know you need like certain type of character and you need the goofy guy who's gonna be i got real cookies and then he's gonna go and shoot everybody like <laughs> you want that you want like you you need that energy in the group and i think he's bringing it because there's nobody else that he's bringing that energy right now yeah. in the crew. So yeah, I was I was really glad to see him. I loved everything, like all the conversation. We get so much, like so much um, backstory and a little bit a uh, uh, Kelvin uh, Kelvin drop here. Like uh, Kelvin, uh, we we're here the Kelvin the George George Kirk. So no, I was I was happy about it. Is that what, where until where are we going? I'm like, Start, I'm stay like, there, stay there. You're good. Stay there. I'm not You're going good. farther. All no, right. not yet. Not yet. You're good. MC. I, I think this is probably the best place for me to talk about this. And Julian, feel free to jump in because I know you and I have had many conversations about this A since lot. we first yeah. watched this episode. And that's, I really like Jim in this episode, but. I'm starting to have issues with how much we're featuring Kirk this season because, um, I mean, you know, spoilers for the trailer. We already know there's another scene of him and it's making Una sweat. Oh, so he's, yeah. Oh, sorry, Eric. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh, but so we know that he's going to be in another episode this season. And he was a big part in episode 203, and he's a big part of this episode. So much, I would say that in both of those episodes, he is the uh, the, the secondary protagonist. I know there's a proper word for it, but I can't put it right at the moment. No, um, it works. Uh, so, yeah, they have a lot of him in the it's like as soon as Kirk, Kirk can't be a just supporting character, he's like the, you know, you know, four thousand pound rhinoceros in the room. He he's he's there, um, and considering how much we've been criticizing the overabundance of Spock this season, 
Uh, I think that it's also valid to call out the overabundance of Kirk, because when you have those two particular characters have an overabundance at a show about Captain Pike, it becomes very glaring because, frankly, we've had two television series about them already and two movie series. So, um, yeah, Julian, I know you and I have had many debates about this, and you very much disagree with me because you're in love with Paul Wesley. Well, well yeah. I disagree also, and I'm I, not in love with Paul Wesley. So I do. I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it when it's my turn. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I, let Eric I mean, go. That I'll, I'll touch yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I mean, like I, you know, uh, I did have other stuff to say because, of course, no. Go ahead, Kelvin. Kelvin, Kelvin reference. I can't with Kelvin reference. Um, I'll mention this now because we don't have it in the notes uh, to talk about the scene. I am a little bitter that we have two Kelvin references sandwiching a spapple scene. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the other one? Uh, the, 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 the first meeting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, just it, it, it felt like a personal attack on me <laughs> to have two references to Kelvin. It's true. It's true. Yeah. The with, with, with this with this Spapple scene, which actually having them playing chess together um, for her Spuhura fans of, in the Kelvin verse. That's how that's how Spock and Uhura started dating in the Kelvin verse, according to the comics, ah. is by playing chess together. So as I was watching that, I was like, oh, how dare Ouch. you? Ouch. Nice. Eric. <laughs> I love the brothers, um, the sibling rivalry. I think they work great together. Um, yeah, I'm down for the, the long teleport sequence. Man. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That was hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was into it. I was like, ooh, I, yeah. I, I really, more. I really Go like, around the pillar one more. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Go back down, back up. Yeah. Pause in certain I'm spots. Know what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I really like Paul Wesley, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> um, that being said, I really want to meet George Kirk now. Yes. Just based no, on same. what oh, yeah. they've said about him and how he plays off of their emotions, I guess. And mm -hmm. I really hope that they get Thor to play him. Dude, that would I, be amazing. I've been thinking the same thing. Somehow get Chris Hemsworth. That would be amazing. His wife was oh, the man. voice of of disco right so yeah yeah why not yeah, yeah. they yeah. like star trek um uh, money 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 there's that, money yeah. money yeah yeah that's yeah right. they'd have to cancel another show to afford <laughs> you're acting something. like paramount is disney or something yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. <laughs> well they might be now after the money they're, they're getting from oh, the show. impossible uh, oh mm. my god i uh, still have yeah. to see that um so good that being said, I really, I do think they've used a lot of Kirk this season, but I don't mind. I really like him. Um, it This episode made me think I would be down if they did another TOS with these with these three. Like, yeah, I, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it in the end meeting, but I'm 100% fine with him. I liked, um, I liked the swagger of Kirk with his brother. He's like, what? I'm just being me. I'm just being awesome. You just be <laughs> awesome too. I was like, fuck, you're so Kirk right now. I love it. it, it it's such a good intro to real Kirk. Like yes. we have, cause we, we'd seen mm -hmm. alternate so far. So seeing him slow motion transport and then, and then have this awesome scene. Yeah. Then he was Kirk in my mind. Yeah. Um, you have to go all the way back. I think to, our first like five episodes of the pod or so to get my thoughts on how they would handle James T. Kirk on the show. And I think I said very clearly, like I don't want a lot of Kirk. I have no problem with a couple of guest appearances because he's part of the canon. He should be a part of the show in some way, maybe a couple of guest appearances and maybe you end this show with Pike giving the keys to Jim, right? Cool way to end it. Boom. And then they cast Paul Wesley. And I really just automatically got the vibe from him and I loved quality and mercy. And then I think we were talking about wants and don't wants with the open Pike. And we've been talking about in this season. And like, I, I can't say that that's true for me anymore. Like 
Paul Wesley has taken this character and done him so well, whether it's an alternate version or the real one we finally get in this. And I will say, I think my thoughts maybe would have been different had it not been done so well in this episode, but he's written so well that I just can't, like, I want more mm-hmm. of him. Like, I want Jim Kirk to be more of these stories. Do I want more of Anton? Yes, that's why he signed on to yeah. do this fucking show. Um, I want Pike. I know, and we've talked about this now a little bit more. We have a little bit more information. I think he hasn't been featured as much this season because he was on paternity leave, Yeah. Um, which is fair. But, like, this scene, like, it's everything I want. It's it, It's got great TOS vibes. We get to see the two of them. We get to see them talk about each other. They get to talk about George Kirk. The Kelvin, I mean, listen, I'm not even the biggest Kelvin stan, but having that reference there is still just awesome. Like, Paul Wesley is very much like, I'm not a Shatner stan, like, at all. Mm-hmm. And I like Chris Pine, don't get me wrong, but, like, Paul Wesley has really done something with this character and really made him his own. And if he keeps showing up at this point, uh, I've changed my tune. I'm very much all about having him in this, and I, I adored this scene. Uh, since, since everybody's scanning up on me, I'm going to talk a little <laughs> bit more about this. Uh, I do, I do really like Paul Wesley as 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 Kirk. He is currently probably tied for number one. Shatner is in the third spot still, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, yep. yeah. Um, and I, you know, love all of the stuff with with him and Sam. And if they have more of him, like that's fine. But they have such a fine line that they have to walk i would agree with that when they when they have them on because i mean like this week you have an article coming out about how you're sick of spock i haven't even started it yet but it's it's in my head <laughs> like like we have characters yeah. that um, we've hardly know like ortegas like we've had like so yeah. little and we know way more about kirk like even before the show started but you yeah. get this much more it's sort of sad yeah the, yeah this is one of the thing one of the reasons why i'm critical of the focusing on spock and kirk is because yeah. these are characters who are very well fleshed out and yes it is cool to get to know that uh that uh, that sam and jim have this sibling rivalry and apparently sam's got a lot of daddy issues but i'm a lot more <laughs> issue, interested in that from from sam's point of view because i want to get to know sam more. right Right. Fair. Um, yes. And, and so, yeah, like, give me, like, give me, like, three more Tagus episodes before we get, like, some really meaty Kirk stuff. Like, and let's get these characters that we don't know yet. And we know why George doesn't like Sam. It's because he doesn't clean up his plates after he <laughs> eats. Like, man. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Spock at the end of the episode clean up his wine glass, too? Absolutely. <laughs> like, oh, my God. It's so good. I, I hope that this is a trend. For the rest of the season the um, bus boys in the bar love spock they love him they adore him maybe spock does some side bartending uh when he's on his off time um the kind episode. of guy who does the bed at the hotel room yeah right <laughs> you know with with the with the turnover yeah he and talks everything, in right? everything yeah. and so on the bed is perfect they don't know if they the, the, the house cleaning came or not you know when they enter yeah. the room yeah. yeah he makes the bed while chapel's still in it <laughs> <laughs> are you f-ing kidding me no you're not that just was perfect um this episode is really important for kirk for a couple other big reasons one it, it and listen like not so much for me but there's so many fucking people on social media who just like feel the need to complain Oh, Pike and Kirk have, have never met, and uh, th- this isn't canon, and it, 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 it just shouldn't happen. Well, guess what? It happened. It does keep the canon of Kirk meeting Pike when he was promoted to fleet captain, as mentioned in the Menagerie, right? So y'all can't complain anymore. Um, because, like, there's a one-liner. I was like, have you ever met uh, Christopher Pike? He's like, no, only, you know, briefly when he was promoted to fleet captain. This was a brief meeting, and he was promoted to fleet captain. You can shut up now. <laughs> I mean, these guys like took the line and were like, okay, how can we make that something that works? It's like some like... It's perfect though, right? Like it's okay, but you only get the all one. you need, right? You, you only know, get... it's like, it's the same way when I see like uh, uh, a gun that is all like hot glued. I'm like, it works. Yeah. Dude, are right? we calling that sewing? No, it's not. But it is, but it's fine. Right. You don't, yeah, it's exactly. fine. <laughs> um, you know? 
I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it also mer marks his first meeting with Uhura, um, which is also a play on their first meeting in Trek 09. Uh, Draft, more, more on this. What do we think Sorry? about this? Of Uhura mm -hmm. meeting Jim. And oh, this, I love what that. we just talked about that and how scene, being a play on 09. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That scene when they meet at the bar, I was like, where's Cupcake? Where's Cupcake? <laughs> 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 uh, it, it was so fun. And like when she right away goes, like, yeah, I'm not in the mood for like getting hit on. And he was like, I'm not hitting on you. And it's so perfect. It's so. I don't know how it's, it's so like essential to how I would imagine the conversation would go down. Like she's pissed, she needs a drink, you know, she goes in and that dude who's here, hey, with his like <laughs> stupid smile. <laughs> and, and I do believe he was not hitting on her. I agree. Yeah. I do believe that, but it's true that when like you are like, you want a drink and you're hearing a sit like that, any guy that's going to talk to you, you're like, no, no, yeah. go away. Um, so I really like this, but um, I, I, I thought it was such a good story. I imagine like they tell that story like later in their life. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you remember the first time we met? Like you thought I was you hitting on you. You broke my fucking nose. You broke dude. my nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. He says that he was going to keep it a secret, secret so it's not yeah. like a problem sure. for her. But sure, like sure. I imagine at one point it becomes... Like, okay, to oh, tell yeah. the story. Yeah, yeah. But I feel it's like such a great way to start uh, like a friendship. It's a great way to, to be like, oh, you remember I met you in like these stupid circumstances. You took me for an idiot and then you broke my nose. It's like core memory. I like, I, I wonder what he was doing following her though. Mm. He may have just been leaving, right? Like he'd finished, he was done with his drink. She actually left her drink like completely. Yeah, she left her drink. Yeah. I was a little annoyed by that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the Saurian brandy. Can we acknowledge they have like the bottle for the Saurian brandy? I really like that. Like, I want to go to that set so badly. Very good TOS. Like, very, very on yeah. point TOS. Um, no, I, 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 that's what I liked in that episode is that it's kind of like seeing a core memory of one of the characters. You know, like things that Uhura from, I don't know, the final frontier, she would tell you that story. Oh, well, you know, mm, yeah. yeah. Like when she's meeting like some cadets or like maybe at the funeral of Kirk, she would tell that story. You know, I met that guy. I thought he was going to hit on me and then I actually hit on him. <laughs> you know, like I imagine like. I, so I loved seeing that episode. For me, it was like seeing a piece of history, like a piece of like a history book of how all these like character ended up in TOS. So no, I, I loved it. I think it was really flawless. I know I'm, I'm, I have the pink goggles on because that's like everything I wanted from Stranger World since the beginning. Um, so yeah, no, I loved it. And I, I suppose we're going to speak about the final scene, but that was like, Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. We are. Same oh, yes. thing. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Uh, MC, you switch. I almost said Eric, you switch spots. <laughs> Um, for me, I'm okay. <laughs> this scene was everything I wanted after a super boring scene that <laughs> is so boring we didn't even talk about it. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch! Am I wrong though? No, I don't I think did. so. Okay, I liked it. <laughs> I okay. Sorry, can I can I go back on this? If we need to speak about that scene. I think it was like tone deaf into that episode. It felt like out of the blue. Like why? No, it was shoehorned in. It was like it was, you have to talk about last episode, I was like, right? Huh? Yeah, they, well, yeah, exactly. I was just like, oh yeah, these guys. I forgot about them. You know already. I did like how Chappelle was like explaining the fact that dude, like, we're in, it's the beginning of a thing. Like I don't know if it's even a thing. And I thought it was really well explained. Like don't let people look in until you're certain that the cat is alive. And I think it's such a good example and it's a good uh, advice and a good way to put it. And to see also that she takes it seriously, but she takes her career seriously also. Yeah. She's not like all about spot. Like she's like, dude, like, okay, it's a, maybe it's just a fling. Maybe it happened. Maybe it will happen. And I love to see also Spock being fucking obnoxious. Like, you move. You move. Shut the 
but it was so spock too like you're talking about like going back to tos he was like a little bit of that like nimoy sarcastic spock in there which i really appreciated yeah i um, liked it i just felt also- that 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 scene had nothing to do here and i i thought it could have like i don't know it, it was again she's so coy you know which i don't like like she could have said it with more you know more certainty more like affirmation being more yeah. like look this is very early let's not do that um but yeah i i just feel it was not the place for that episode for that it thing. didn't it didn't need to be in this episode at ever they like eric said they shoehorned it in because of the events of the last episode but i like that scene a lot because it gives us one of the best lines of the episode uh ignores the doctor's orders part uh, the doctor's part about doctor's orders like just, I, that could have been a, a bone. I mean, there's there's right. no problem with like the Uhura part of the scene. Like, right, that right, is not right. why I'm. No, the Uhura up. part was very good. Also, like she yeah. just jumps in and she was like, "The logic." I was like, "Don't try to logic that right, dude. It's gonna right, co- right. it's gonna bring you into a corner. Yeah. You don't yes. know how." Like, <laughs> but I like. Yeah, it. I actually really like Uhura, like bringing up the logic yeah. because you know Uhura's always been like very kind of like challenging of Spock, um, and. And I think like her character was actually like was was supposed to be kind of a match for him in terms of, you know, logic. So I like that part. But anyways, yes, on to the Uhura and Kirk part. I mean, I, I think as soon as I can't remember who I was talking to while I was watching this episode, but I was immediately like Calvin reference uh, because this scene is just like it's it's a kelvin reference like there is no way that the writers did not watch that scene from 09 right before they watched this like it's a curse uh, production right, they right, had right. to is that right? is that do you think it's a canon event like they have to meet at a bar like, like it's a fair has to like yeah fixed point and they, he has to hit on her and like, <laughs> that's like except it, yeah. i don't i story. don't think he was hitting on her yeah. i think he was just like you know casually sitting there but yeah it's a fixed point that yeah has got to get annoyed at him uh, and i mm-hmm. like that so um i like that and, like- and not neota also because that's also mm-hmm. calvin he doesn't know her yeah. first name yeah. <laughs> yeah and this is and yet another side of uhura that we're seeing in this episode seeing this kind of a, li- a little more you know a little more brassy this is this is her digging into that zoe saldana uh kind of aspect of her which we haven't really seen before and fucking here for it really love it um and yeah um the uh including the the fleet captain thing in there is so cheeky <laughs> it, it's so cheeky for them to do that um i'm you know the canon I care about canon when I care about it. I mean, sometimes I really do care about it. And sometimes I'm just like, whatever. Uh, I, I, I think the, um, if they decide to ignore something, I'm not a huge stickler for it, but when they acknowledge something, that's very cool. Yeah. So I like that they did acknowledge it, but this means that, since they are the we know the writers are aware now they've written themselves into a corner so it's like oh no we are keeping this piece of canon but they can't meet again they just basically like when he beams aboard the next time like he's literally got to like either wave to pike and not say anything or they just be like commander captain and that's it right like no yeah, yeah. It, when it's going to be an episode where they're they're stuck in actually different it, like the, the jordy the episode right. where jordy and roe are like oh they're stuck, out of phase like, they're, they're out of phase <laughs> the, or the buffy episode i see i reference buffy too where, where willow and buffy and xander are like in the same place but can't see each other oh. that's what's going to happen the next time with kirk and pike yes eric <laughs> Um, I love this scene. I I love the the homage to 2009, and I was really looking forward to seeing how um, Wesley reacted or um, interacted with um, Uhura. So um, by Wesley, I meant Kirk. Um, <laughs> so um, I really liked the way how they worked together. I love the rapport. I thought it was so cute and fun and like everyone said it felt like you're watching history 
happen. It was so cool. It was such a cool moment. And it like it would have been the top scene for me in this episode if that last scene didn't happen. Yeah. Because that, yeah. that scene just icing. That scene that. broke me. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I'm not gonna touch more on this because you guys hit it beautifully. Um I already said what I wanted to say about the fleet captain bit. Got you, bitches. Um nope. No, oh, sorry. I because I am I can definitely like MC said like I can be a canon stickler too when I want to be, and this is actually something I cared about. Like this is something I don't think they really could have fucked up, and they did a really good job just throwing it in there. Uh, the one thing I want to say is that when we when we broke down the trailer, remember we said that when we saw them drinking together, uh, we were mm-hmm. like, oh, she's really like annoyed with him about something, right? And I love that it's actually not that scene that she's yeah. annoyed with, but it is a scene of them drinking that she is annoyed with him. So I like that we were partially right about that. So In terms of the canon moments, um, I remember saying this once. I don't think it was on here. It might have been on my YouTube. It's okay to canon break if you do it really well. Because yeah. if, if something is badly written, nobody's going to care. It's, then people are going to, that's the part that they're going to focus on. But if something's really well done, nobody cares. Or if it's because they're adv- like helping the, the plots to yeah. fit, you know, yeah. like, well, I mean, that's like, fine by me also. Listen, I think it is a little bit stupid that they had to sandbox themselves in thinking, you know, thinking that like fanboys would go crazy about this 50 years later. But I think it is kind of silly, even though I think it's important that they kind of keep true to it. I think it is silly that, you know, Pike, I cannot say their names. Pike and Kirk never met. I mean, they met literally once and they both mm-hmm. commanded the same ship. Like, you could probably retcon that away a little bit more if you wanted yeah. to. So, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we, we end up getting this great team up, right? Between Kirk and Uhura after she breaks his nose. Uh, Jim, Jim is like the only one really in this episode who believes that something else may be going on, or at least has the instincts. And like he says, the judge of character, you know, to trust her gut on this. Uh, he uncovers Ramon. Um, he helps her a follow up on her leads and they get to work with Sam. We get to see more Sam and Jim, which is great. And we see some baby Gorn skeletons, by the way. Um, yeah, they, they get to do some science, which Star Trek science. Yes. Thank you. Um, what do we think about them getting to work together? And then eventually also, paving that way for Uhura to solve this thing and have the ability to bring it to Pike. I thought, you know what it made me thought? It made me think of that scene in Discovery. I think in, uh, it's during uh, Such Sweet Sorrow, the episode just before, uh, where Stamet, Spock, and Burnham get to work together on like trying to make the, um, the suit. Like it made yeah. me, it, it had this feeling where I was like, oh, my favorite people in a room doing science shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really liked it. And same, the sibling energy, like going at each other when like these guys are trying like to solve something. Uh, it was giving Spock and Michael when like, you know, Spock is like, I don't remember what's the dig he, 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 he throws at his sister and she's like, always so on point like spark or something like that always so like <laughs> and it made me think of this uh without the tragic undertone of what was going on during such sweet sorrow <laughs> but yeah um i love xenoanthropology i'm so glad that it got like a shout out i don't think that what he's doing is xenoanthropology but you know what <laughs> <laughs> at this point who cares i thought he was a xenobiologist by the way, did he change? Yeah. No, he is. Yeah. A xenobiologist. I believe so. Yeah. Well, I in can, the episode, they say Alpha real quick, right? In his episode, they say he's a xenoanthropologist, oh. and you know, yeah. he's a xenoanthropologist. Michael is a xenoanthropologist. Yeah. And but they're, like, they're always like throwing them all together. Like he next episode, he's probably going to be a xenozoologist because they're like it's all the same. You've got all of the degrees for it. Well, yeah, know? but it's not the same, Bo. I know. <laughs> but it says, it's "Girl, I know it's not." But you know that these types of shows always just like nobody can. Nobody's ever allowed to have one doctorate. They've always got to have five. Yeah, but um, normally it's his position as a science officer. It's like what he's doing is here to be the xenobiologist or the xenoanthropologist, and then it's not the same job, you know? But the fact that what they're doing, like at that moment, like trying to figure out what's, what's going on, I really liked it, first of all. Um, 
that they brought like Sam in because like let's have a science person here to see what up because nor Kirk nor Uhura are science officers, right? All that uh, memory alpha says is that he's um he's in the life sciences department. I'm I okay. I mean, somebody's gonna fact check me, and you please DM me because I'm giving a panel right now. But <laughs> like, um, I'm pretty sure in season one they yeah. say it's a xenobiologist. I think they do. I think you're right. And then biology and anthropology are not Very the different. same thing at all. Yeah. <laughs> and here he's doing xenobiology actually. Yeah. Um, because like he's speaking about how a species could communicate through things, and I think it's more biology than anthropology. But whatever. No, I liked it, and I like that their explication is like slightly technobabble, but like can can work, I suppose. You know, I like when they do that. Where it's like, eh, it's like okay, it's not, it's not outrageous. But I, yeah. I really like the scene. Yeah. Yeah. MC. Uh so a lot of stuff in this. Um, the first thing I want to talk about um, is, you know, the thing that I think is the my favorite part of this, uh, and it's a sibling dynamic, but not Kirk and Kirk. I want to talk about James T. Kirk. And Uhura's sibling mm -hmm. dynamic, because my God, like, like is Kirk giving Big Brother energy when it comes to her? And I love this development because so many debates between people as to like if they had like a romantic thing during TOS or you know what was going on. Was Kirk like into her? Was she into him? And I really like this dynamic this i because i mean one this makes sense like this is this is totally it um you know like the captain is always you know a father to his men but for uhura it's big brother and you can also you can transpose it onto scenes of them together in tos and it's like yes i see that you know you know, Uhura is reacting to Kirk, not just as a captain, but as kind of like this big brother mentor figure. Mm -hmm. Really, really like that. And it also really darkly, I mean, like Plato's stepchildren is really dark already. Yes. But makes it even darker. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I was going to tell you that when you said that. I was like, oh, that gives Plato's uh, stepchildren a wall of a layer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, believe me. <laughs> was already in my head. Oh, yeah. that episode is just so. Um, that episode something. <laughs> but and I'm here also that uh, uh, Kirk's love language is food. I I, I really know. recognize. I really heart. like recognize this. Like it's real cookies, and I cookies. Yeah, like I don't want your fucking. Cookies. <laughs> like it was like yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and 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 this is also like uh, Julian and I were just yesterday having a conversation about the state of replicators. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I trended because of bacon. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do it because of Mike, so yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I have no right. idea. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but we were talking about replicators, and they said specifically in this what they what they use. I think it's protein resequencers. They, okay, like they they got to get their shit together, right? Because they've said replicators. They say they've said protein resequencers. Like it in in yeah. TOS, it was protein resequencers. In Stranger Worlds, it's been both. I don't fucking know. Just I know. Give me a chocolate like, chip cookie. Like I don't care. Yeah. I don't care where. But it goes. I mean, they, they were. They yeah. were real, real chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. So yeah. They, they put them in the oven with some cookie dough. That's Yeah, but by yeah. Picard, nobody knows how to cook anymore. I know, right? Because like um, Alison Peel is like Alison Peel, uh what's her name? Um Gerardi. whatever. She's a Gerardi, like, Gerardi, yeah. Gerardi, super like surprised at like what cooking is. Then you put all this and you burn it? And it's like, oh my god, what? So no. yeah. I somebody needs to write a history of uh food and cooking in star trek i want that book oh yes. dude like i would love to like if uh one of the like the comic companies or the novel companies would like to hire me i would love to write a book about a character who basically just creates recipes for replicators because i would think that you would have to like create well, like una speaks about it in q a yeah she's yep. the one that uh, created like the resequencer like one of the formulas for the resequencers yeah Top i think she she created like Star a fleet edition a particular like version of protein matter that yep. they mm -hmm. use in the rep in whatever it was in whatever it is so much poop. um 
And who I think it was Giraffe who said that the whole breaking of the nose, like Uhura should talk about that at Kirk's funeral. And that is now headcanon for me. Yes. And I also think she like, I mean, of course she talked talk to me at the funeral, but you know, Scotty got them all plastered many times <laughs> and they always made Uhura tell the story of the time tell she the broke story nose. when he tried to hit on you and you broke his nose he was not hitting on me I thought well, he was hitting on me <laughs> so I, I mean of nose. course like the thing is the story like grows over time yeah yeah because <laughs> of course it does and it was a red alert and <laughs> and bones yeah. is probably just sulking in the corner about her like using the the fixer thing like improperly yeah <laughs> oh, that bones is like, archaic medicine god damn it and i uh, didn't notice that they changed that sam's discipline but i do chalk that up to the fact that um multiple multiple disciplinary scientists are just like standard on on movies and television where True. it's just like yeah i have seven doctorates and it's like or then you're a very bad doctor if you got or seven doctors it shows that kirk has no fucking clue what's the especially of his brother which is well very on brand. that's that very seems on brand. very valid like ask my family what i'm doing and what i studied in university they will tell you a wide array of things before telling you classics and archaeology so mm. totally possible I could totally see that, and that's why I will accept another Kirk episode if it's one where we're dealing with Sam and George. Yeah, fair. Yeah, Eric, love the the nose punch. Great. Um, <laughs> I like that Sam Kirk wasn't the butt of a joke for once. Like he was actually useful. I I like that. I want to see more of that. He has hardly mm -hmm. been in this season too, but it was nice to see him actually be useful, even though it was sort of a nudge at. Uh, Jim to be like, you know what? I am smart. I can do things that you can't do. Um, and, you know, I like seeing sciencey things. Um, I don't I can't add anything more to these two. Like, that's why I'm in this spot. Okay, yeah. I'm fine. You should go first and then we should nah, do after. It's fine. I think Just it will. steamrolling this episode. <laughs> because even if you go like for five minutes, I know I can add more, 10 minutes more. It's like my superpower. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> The only thing that I really want to add is that I really like at the end of this episode when she's on the bridge with Jim and Pike mm -hmm. and Pike is like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And J and um, and Uhura is like, I am positive. And Pike, you know, because like, listen, Pike doesn't have 100 percent of the information. So he does give that look to Jim that like, do I trust her? And without any kind of hesitation, like a lot of shows, sometimes they'll play up the drama and like, it'll be a second before there's the nod, but he's just like, no doubt. Right. Yeah. Has put all of his faith and trust in her. And I loved that. I absolutely adored that. I loved it, but I have many questions because she literally, he's a person that is losing her mind, having, uh, visions of dead people, uh, a wolf thing going on, and he just blows up a freaking factory. Yeah, like but I was he's, just he's like, also I like enough to I like go. the sentiment. I like the sentiment, but I was like, <laughs> she's an ensign. <laughs> here's the, here's the thing. I think that if she hadn't been having those visions and hallucinations, Pike would have done it just without asking Kirk. You think so? I, I, yeah, I, I, th I think the fact that um, I, we've already established how much Pike values Uhura. So I think that it was the fact that she was under stress that he actually had to look to Kirk for confirmation. Just I my think, opinion. I think, I think if Ramon hadn't blown up in a cell that this actually would have been an issue. Like how much trust, like if Ramon's on a factor here, right? But like there's something going on, right? Like a dude literally ejected himself out of a nacelle and like damaged my ship. Weird shit's going on. The station has been sabotaged. I, I, I buy it. I, I love that scene so much. Um, just like the chemistry between everyone. Like the scene was, we've, we've talked about the writing and I, I know that we try our damnedest and our hardest, like not to like criticize writers because they work really hard. And a lot of us do writing of our own, but like, credit where credit is due i felt like the writing on this episode for all the characters was perfect from dialogue to the to just like subtle looks like it was 
Chef's kiss. Um, I, I mean, we, been... we we went from like it's a cage to why do you have crumbs on your uniform? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I do find out. We're gonna get to that <laughs> very soon. Um, I, 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 before we get to that, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it is important uh, to episode three, right? Lon and Kirk do have a really nice but brief scene together where they connect, and you know, we we also learn some more even about about George. What did we think about these two uh, connecting? I, I, I'm just going to ask that the moment where the theme of EPZ3, like the music, shows yes. up. I, I, like that theme is so beautiful for Lan and Kirk that every time I hear it, it's like a pinch to my heart. Oh. That's the only, like, really, it like just like, oh, I feel like all the loss of episode three yet again, every time I hear like just that, that little theme. So big up Nami, beautiful theme. Nice. MC. Uh, so I'm going to say something. I throw out something interesting here. So this is not based off of any spoilers we've heard. It's because we haven't heard any spoilers. Uh, and w this is the last thing we have as not of, yeah, seen anything after this. As of this recording, this. we are yeah. caught up on our screens. We have not seen so, anything. So I, we're yeah. going in blind. But uh, this is something that I, writers, produced, somebody mentioned in an interview. I think the reason why Kirk wasn't hitting on Uhura is because this version of Kirk is already with, uh, what's her name? Um, Carol. Oh, Carol. Carol Marcus. Carol Marcus. Because, like, okay, he's, you know, teasingly saying that, like, you know, oh, you still owe me that drink. But, I mean, as we see in this episode, you can have a drink with somebody without it being, like, a romantic thing. And so, he does, also says it in a really non-flirtatious way. I know, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I th I'm. this is my prediction that I'm making now when Kirk shows up again and Una is sweating because of the, the detention. It's going to turn out that Kirk is already with Carol Marcus. Imagine Carol beaming on, like, a few seconds later. Oh, Who, who's, who's playing break. Marcus? Oh God! I we have don't no know. Idea. I no, have no I know. Idea. Just, I know. I know. I, I, from, I don't uh, even know who but, to guess. From uh, Into Darkness, I always forget her name. Alice Eve. Yeah, Carol yeah, Marcus. Eve, oh, yeah, you think the Alice same Eve. actress? They would cast the same actress. What has she been doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't I know. would love her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric. Eric. Wait, what? Which one are we there talking about? Oh, uh, <laughs> the scene. La and Kirk. Kirk. It was cute. Uh, I like their chemistry. So, I if we are getting more Kirk this season, I don't mind seeing them together again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really liked like that we got to learn that Jim's a bit of an army brat, right? Like mm -hmm. he's you know him and Sam and um, Winona like moved around a lot. Whether he was posted, whether George was posted to star bases, or Jim wasn't born yet unless he was born on the Kelvin, which if it didn't explode, it makes sense that he'd still be born on that ship. Um, Cause what are we, we would imagine that everything up to the Narada happening has happened. So do you want me to explain? Sure. I actually know. I okay. actually know. Uh, so uh, Winona had like, it was like something to like, keep the basically like to extend the pregnancy. Oh, so okay. that they could get back to Earth. Like, they were oh. on their way back. Like, what happened with the whole Narada incident, that kind of broke whatever the thing was, like, delaying it. And that's why she went into labor early. Because uh, the different Kirks actually do have different uh, birth dates. Uh, oh, okay. So, so, yeah, Kirk was actually born in, in Riverside, Iowa. Oh, that's right. He's born in duh. Duh. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but it, it, it's still a cool fact, like getting to learn that, you know, he was an army brat. He's been moved yeah. around a lot. And um, there's there are, you know, you do miss out on, you know, seeing that family member who's in the service a little bit more than you would. And there's probably some resentment for that. But the fact that he still respected what his dad did enough to follow both of them, follow in his footsteps yeah. and join Starfleet. I just like getting these little factoids about both the Kirk brothers. So and it might also explain why. uh uh sam eventually goes into uh civilian uh son. right he was He's married time. and yeah. has a son yeah. yeah yeah and explain is also was why kirk is so uh like pulled with david you know and yeah he doesn't know what to do and so on yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
Um, we did talk about it a bit at the top of the show. We don't need to spend too much time on it, but um, the Hemmer's presence, right? It, it just felt considerably in this episode, even when we don't get those recordings or zombie Hemmer, right? Um, and it's definitely that that root of uh, tension between Pelia and Una. Uh, when Una sees Pelia, right, she sees Hemmer, but instead of, of telling Pelia that, Una hides behind like excuses like protocol and not following orders. And that C, a that, C. Yeah, <laughs> that C that Pelia gave her at the Academy. Um, even the way that Uhura interacts with Pele at the beginning of the episode, what do we think about these interactions at, at this hole that, that Hammer's left and, you know, these scenes between Pele and Una? Uh, I thought it was a bit bullshit, to be honest. Like, be professional. I, yeah. I, uh, I get it. I get what it brings. I get the emotional, I get how it it builds us also the attachments, the love they had for Hammer, Hammer, how we can peek into their grief, but I... I mean, we've all, I don't know you, but I've been in, in the point in my, like, at work where, you know, you replace people and sometimes because that person has passed and I'm not going to hate on the new person. You need a freaking in chief yeah. engineer. I mean, uh, will I be a, a little bit like the other person was, would not have done that. The other person would not have, like, yeah, I would think yeah. it, but it's still your job. And I feel like, especially as a, first officer i found it kind of like women be women be emotional <laughs> women be not able to like deal with like losing the man you know i was just like are you kidding me you really think una who was like cool as a cucumber during her freaking trial went in jail was like threatened with like penal colony in like but fuck nowhere neutral zone you think she'd be like acting like a brat to the chief engineer? Like I, I, I it just I like the dialogue and I liked the uh, the how it was giving more like like plot to um Pelia. Yeah. But I just was like you don't see Pike doing that. You don't see Spock doing that. You see the two women doing it, being emotional and shit. And I was just like, nah, I would have loved something else. Yeah. Fair. MC. I forgot to mention during the first scene with Pelia with Uhura. I like the moment where Pelia, you know, compliments uh, Hammer as like a great engineer. And she's like, I don't mean that. <laughs> it's because he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> I love it because it's so true. Yeah. It's very, very true. Um, but as I alluded to at the beginning, I did not like the Pelia and Una resolution. I like like them interacting with each other. And I think it could have just been that you know, they have very different styles. Like we didn't need to tie it to Hammer just because they decided that this was the Hammer episode. Um, because it did seem to kind of just come out of nowhere and i've been racking my brain other than the scene where hammer is trying to like teleport up the molten core of the planet or whatever <laughs> uh were una and hammer in any scenes together yes. uh, in the elysian kingdom Neither of them remembered that. But yeah, yeah, no, I know, but yeah. they are yeah. in a, they are in scenes together. No, give but each I, other I, some snark too. No, like they uh, have like no. snarky conversations at the beginning yeah. of of um, Ghost of Illyria as yeah. well. I'm just saying, like, it comes out of is, the left field. Like, yeah, absolutely. no, it does. this is it this really is, is a big thing to because I mean, Pelly has been on the ship for a while now. You've been carrying this shit around this long for a character that we. Of all of the characters, do, do, did you feel like Una and Hammer had like this big connection with each other? We were actually thinking like at the beginning of the season that Spock might have this kind of reaction uh, mm -hmm. because Spock did have that kind of relationship yes. with Hammer. Yeah. Spock, Uhura, these are the characters that it makes sense to kind of uh, brush up uh, with uh, Pelia because of their feelings about hammer but they well, hurt us and they so don't much. put spark in everything see <laughs> well yeah, well yeah but but i'm just it, that it wasn't necessary that if you wanted these two to butt heads there were plenty of other reasons and that's because pelia is is kind of a space hippie and una's very by the book it doesn't have to be any like 
anything more than that. Yeah, fair. Eric. I wish they had kept it at, you gave me a bad grade and that's why I don't like you. Yes. yes that would have been fine. Absolutely. That would have been fine. Because that would have would have cared. So, yes, exactly. Because she's so, again, by the book and she cares about those things. Um, it, it felt so tacked on, the, the hammer thing. And I, it, it, I didn't like it. Because, again, like MC said, when did they ever show this sort of connection in the series? Mm, never. Even yeah. when he tried to beam up the sun. It was, she was just being like, I, I got to save the ship. It's yeah. not like, yeah. Hammer, don't do it. I love you as a, yeah. as a friend. Um, Didn't he get knocked out? I don't remember. <laughs> she knocked him out. Right, she stunned yeah. him. I think. Oh, yeah. And then picked him up, and I was very gay when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like it, it, it just seemed like the wrong. Like, I kept keep the hammer stuff with her in this episode. It would have been just fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was unhinged. Yeah. I loved the sea line. I thought it was great. I think it was great for Una. Like that's so Una. That's such an Una thing to be pissed off about. I thought it was perfect. Um. I, I don't mind it just because I, I like that they got to have that interaction. But yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Like you could have left it at the sea and that would have been fine. Um, that being said, with, with this going full circle with Hemmer, I do love that we get that final shot of him at the end after they fixed everything, even though it's not actually Hemmer though. But you just get to see Bruce Horak in the, in the makeup smiling. It's so beautiful. And I just, I adored that. I really did. Um, speaking of things that absolutely broke me, TOS, TOS, the episode ends with another, I'm like getting teary eyed just saying this, I'm not kidding, very important meeting, and that is between Spock and Kirk. So the episode ends with Uhura, Jim, and Spock all at a bar table that, yeah, I have no problem admitting, like I teared up both times. I've watched this episode just watching this this scene. This just go off. I'm I can't I can't I, talk. I'm just gonna talk about Hammer a little bit. It <laughs> gave me Elysian Kingdom, the end of Elysian Kingdom. You know, you don't really know if it's really his daughter. Right. You know, yeah. but it 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 helps him grieve. It it helps him say goodbye and be not okay with it, but like move on in a positive way from his grief and i felt the same thing for uhura like yeah. it's not really him but at the same time it is him saying telling her you did a good job and which like she wanted from him and that's what he says also when he dies you know and i feel like it 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 gives that character an ability to move from their trauma and from their grief in a positive way like it happened and and now I know that they're okay or I know they're ha happy with my decision or something like that. And then they can move on. And that's why I think that we're not going to go back to like, the. I hope not, to like Uhura's trauma because this was the perfect yeah. Good yeah. job. Now you can now now you can soar, you know? Yeah. The end scene broke me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy to see them sitting at a table and i'm gonna say i'm being a bitch for that but i was kind of happy that chapel was not here because yeah. she's the other like legacy yeah. character and i and i think it's a problem because if they had they hadn't pulled all that bullshit with romance and so on she could have been here without the tension you put her at the table there's a tension and the, mm -hmm. this table this moment is about the very deep friendship that is going to last for like decades, you know, where they're going to work together and save each other life and like be here for each other from that moment until they freaking die. Right. Um, and, and I feel that it's too bad that in that moment we can have chapel with them. And that's yeah. all because they wrote her in the way they wrote her and she should have been here. Yeah. She's part of this. She worked with them for freaking years, you know? And that's mm -hmm. so sad. That was kind of sad to me that I was like, oh, whoever, oh, you know, it's too bad that Bones is not here. And I was like, damn, Chapel is on the ship. Yeah. She should have been here. And, and I'm glad they didn't do it because right now that would have been like, that would have made the scene totally different. 
Yeah. But yeah. oh, the moment where they check their hand and they bond all together over the hatred of Sam Kirk being <laughs> a slob. Best, uh, same. That is such a core memory. I hope like that shows up in an eulogy at one point or another. <laughs> <laughs> but um and they sit and they chat and and you see you see history you see star trek history right it's like the moment mm -hmm. where mariner and boimler are at the bar and they see spock and kirk written on the table i'm mm -hmm. like it's like the same thing i was like oh my god i saw the moment we're like they will be on because Bones is not on the bridge so often, but like they are all three on the bridge all the time, and I loved it. I loved it so much. Yeah, MC. Oh, that handshake brings all the spurks to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this scene, I'm shocked at how affected I am by the. No, maybe I'm not shocked by how affected I was by it, but I had such deep feelings for this scene. First of all, I realized that considering how much, you know, like people make of the Kirk and Spock relationship, and I know, like, I know you cannot beat that, Uhura knew both of them first. And I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was not expecting it. Like, I, I thought they were going to tease it out, like, because they just had, like, the your Vulcan friend reference. And then at the very end, like, you just see, like, Spock's hand come in and, like, take the glass up, first of all. Of all of the callbacks to have to episode uh, 205, that's a good one. <laughs> I want Spock to always be cleaning up people's glasses. <laughs> you know he gives that energy, though. You know oh, he does. Yeah. 1000% like being like, you know, like you go to pee uh, during the night and you come back, your bed is done because like Spock was around and you're like, oh, <laughs> fuck, man, why are you like, I, I eat <laughs> and sometimes I'm like drinking a, a coffee and I put my coffee down. It's a half full. I go to pick up something in the office, come back and my like it's gone clean, like in, in the cupboard. And I'm like, I was drinking a coffee. It's like very on brand. I, I, yeah. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit that I, I do the whole Spock thing. I don't do it if, if there's anything in it, because that's rude. People might still be drinking it. Exactly, but if there's thank an empty, you. If, if there's an empty glass, like, I'm somebody who's just like, I'm going to clean that up. Uh, but yeah, seeing, like, the first meeting like this, it gave me such uh, Anakin Skywalker meet Obi-Wan Kenobi vibes, like, from The Phantom Menace, which I know people have their thoughts about The Phantom Menace, but that scene was good. And this scene was just amazing to be able to see them meeting for the first time. And yes, I know I kind of made a joke about that handshake, but that handshake was powerful. Yeah. That was a firm yeah. handshake. Yeah. Um, that was and, a sexy I, handshake, let's say. Yeah. Let's say it was. I, I made a teleporter like, uh, thing go around. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah. It was like a. It's like yeah, a I, handshake that will spark so much fan fiction. You know that. And I well, I, I said that in chat today. Yeah, I was like did. that that handshake. It's gonna live forever in <laughs> gift form and just you know stills. Like that's that's never going anywhere. People are gonna put it that right up next to the shot of. Um, them in the motion picture holding hands oh my oh, god yes. yeah yep yeah i know spark girls <laughs> uh, <laughs> i might not be one but i know how they think um and yeah and giraffe is completely right they could have had chapel here but they couldn't because of what they've done what yep. have you done what have you done <laughs> <laughs> eric I everything that these two have said, um, <laughs> but also the music playing over this with the jazz band was perfect. Like oh there was nothing else I could imagine that um, could have worked as as well as this. Like just having that traveling band come on and just play play in this one spot so that these three legendary characters could meet together. The only comparable thing other than the Anakin and Obi Wan example which is a perfect one was as a dc fan when i saw superman batman and wonder woman on screen for the first time together mm. i hate batman v superman with a passion but that seeing them together gave me so many chills 
and made me so happy that I turned into that eight year old boy. And that's sort of what this felt like. It felt like coming home. Like, oh, yes. yes. Yeah, Perfect. that's it. Mm-hmm. Coming home. That's coming exactly home. that. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. we speak that the enterprises are live quartered? Like, Boimler be leaving. Like, Boimler, be, like oh, into yeah. it. I hope that he gets to see the quartet on the cross. The live quartet? Oh, they have a God. live band. Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, a- Enterprise D vibes, man. And the chef. <laughs> what? Like, real, real And the cook? chef. Yeah. Yeah. The budget Spoilers cuts that, Spoilers, that Kirk's Riker. Enterprise went through. Like, <laughs> right, astounding. No women, no band. Oh, my and God. And I mean, the what size happened? of Uhura's quarters. And can we yeah. speak also that, like, in, like, Strange New World, they're eating burgers and shit. And Sue, uh, under Kirk, they're eating, like, food cubes. Food like cubes. what happened? <laughs> Kirk what runs happened? a tight ship, man. Hey, they have like beautiful in with drinks. Tribbles, he had a chicken sandwich. Like hey. they have beautiful doing retail like umbrellas and during spa, uh, Kirk's Hawk's enterprise. Umbrella. They have like all like these like little plastic curbs cups that they go yeah. around yeah. with. What happened? <laughs> Budgetary cuts. So that's what happened. Budget cuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're all we all do this podcast because we love star trek and star trek just means absolutely so much to me in my life and it's it's amazing when when star trek is able to give you little scenes that a lot of people would probably think are inconsequential but this is probably one of my favorite scenes of new trek ever because like giraffe said you're literally witnessing history because when you see them all sitting at that bar together for the first time you're not just seeing them there at the bar for the first time your brain takes you to everything else that you've seen them do whether you're you've been a fan since tos first aired whether you're a tng baby like me whether you're watching star trek for the first time during the kurtzman era of trek right like getting to see this moment where they become friends and and i'm gonna disagree with you guys i'm actually really happy that chapel wasn't there even though she could have been because draft you said it these three are on the bridge together all of the time they are very close and i think it was really important for it for this scene to be these three only um Mm -hmm. because we know everything that and and listen not to throw any shade chapel's way because she's important to this crew but she also wasn't on the ship as long you know like she does go her separate way like these people literally lived and died together um and i i think that's really important and i just cannot say enough about this scene and and it could have gone wrong like they could have put some silly silly lines in there they could have blocked it wrong it was just it was just perfection like i i can't oh i loved it i loved it i just say that considering we have kirk and spock meet bonding over sam kirk's messiness (laughs) really means that somebody needs to do some sort of post episode story about operation annihilate because that episode is completely different now <laughs> right yeah right yeah it is it is uh any final thoughts on this one before we move on guys anything anything we hope that it continues this way please yes upwards yes, upwards, so upwards. upwards we believe in you speaking of oh upwards. i do have one thing Yes, go um, ahead. You were talking about how well the, the horror-esque shots were. The director, Dan Liu, directed The Walking Dead. There you oh, go. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. That's Which, awesome. you know, Zombie Hember, kind oh. of a shout out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Love, it. Yeah. Love it. This was such a good episode. Like, out of this season, like, this is the six we've seen so far. Like, we're not being shy about that. We've seen the six. And this one is, I think, the second best one of the, yeah. the season uh, I agree. for me it's all again it's exactly like what they were supposed to do this is elevated tos explaining canon explaining backstories badass beautiful all that that's perfect mm-hmm. yep uh let's read it we'll go in our opposite order eric you're reading out of 10 real home-baked chocolate chip cookies <laughs> I, i'm trying to think of anything that i could take away from this 
and I can't I can't really think of anything other than the chapel scene. I'll just I'll go with nine point five just because of that chapel scene. Yeah, fair nine five. Mm. All right, MC. Uh, I was gonna go for nine five as well because this is a really great episode, but I hate that scene and also <laughs> my feelings about Kirk. There you go. Nice draft. Yeah, I mean, like, in my heart, it's, it's a, a one bajillion of a ten. It's beautiful. I pizzed everything I wanted. But I go for 9.5 also. There are some stuff that I was just like, eh, come on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 9.5. I'll be I'll I'll be me tonight. I'll give it I'll give it the ten since nobody else did. Yes, I'll give it a job. ten. It it was wonderful. You wouldn't be you if you didn't. No, I didn't. And and listen, I've been I've been very harsh. So uh, this is true. I, we should I, average I, all our points at the end of the season. We should. I'd actually like to know. Yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah, ten ten. Um that that does it for this one guys we don't have any any mailbag on the video i will be recording a separate intro you'll get to see how the sausage is made a little bit um but uh i will say to you mc and you giraffe have fun at comic-con uh i can't wait to hear all about it uh remember to support the actors and the writers who are striking to get what they've earned and deserve without them we don't get to talk about this show and all the other shows and I just want to say, don't bother them. On, don't bother the actors on Twitter. They literally cannot answer your questions. Yeah, stop asking them about conventions and stuff, please. Not about Thank conventions. You. Don't tag them and stuff about shows. Don't ask them. They when can't it's coming comment. back. They don't have answers. Like let yeah. them let them do their strike. All right. We will leave it at that. For draft for Eric for MC. I am Julian. Live long and prosper, Muslim. Good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.